Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kaleidoscope of the Arts. Uh, I'm Marie Labras, one of your co-hosts, and filling in for Didi Gozian today is... Karen Fristerio. Hi, everybody. Yeah, and who else is with us today? Our guest today is Sue Stroke from the Charlotte County Children's Theater. And I'd like to, before we get started, I want to recognize who our sponsor is for our program. Without a sponsors that actually support us and support our programs, we couldn't be. So thank you to Wendy Namek from Namek Portfolio Investment Professionals. You can find Wendy at www.namek.com, 941-429-2911 or email wendy at namak.com. It's spelled N-A-M-A-C-K. And I'm, in case everybody's listening to me, I sound like I have a head cold. I'm just recovering from COVID. And um, uh, interesting. So we can, uh, just for all of you, stay safe out there and, um, you know, be careful. We were very careful and we went out one time and um, picked it out up. So, uh, you know, those are some things that I think maybe at one time all of us will get it. But talking with my doctor, uh, we have the Omicron um, variant of it. And and it's not as bad as um, Delta. Delta is the one that everybody ended up in the hospital and that the Omicron, it's feeling like a bad cold. So, um, but it kicked my butt, man. It kicked my butt. Mm -hmm. So enough about me. I'd like to remind people you're listening to us from WKDW 97.5 FM, Real Community Radio, and we're coming out of Northport from Bishop West Real Estate Tower, and thank you, Bishop West, for sponsoring our tower, because you couldn't hear us on air, if, on air, but you can listen to us on www.kdwradio.com from any place in the world, and you can also... If you have a smart speaker, whatever you call your smart speaker, and I'm going to turn yours on right now for you. Alexa, play WKDW 97.5 FM Rural Community Radio, and we'll come on. So um, thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your busy day to come in, uh, in to listen to us. Karen, before we get going, uh, um, do you guys hear a background noise on your end? It might be on mine. Um, I would like to find out what is happening at the Northport Arts Center, because I know you have the children's program going on right now. Yes. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about what's going on. Well, our camp started this morning for the children from 6 to 12 and the teen camp. And um, they had a great morning. They were making octopuses and uh, octopi, I guess it's called, <laughs> <laughs> and seahorses and mermaids and all type of thing. And the older kids did some alcohol ink on tiles. And uh, so they all went home a little after one. So now it's quiet here. Um, oh, is it? Because uh, I hear background talking. Is somebody in the background talking? Michelle's no? talking okay. about out of uh, the gallery, but uh, well, there you have it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, so what a lot of fun. And that's one of the things that we want to talk about today is how important it is to get your kids involved in the art uh, with the summer, summer with wind down in that. And your kids are look, you're looking for things for your children to do. And not everybody is an athlete and who wants to go out in this heat? here in Florida, uh, you know, and do that. And one of the things that not only with the art camp, and there's still a few openings, aren't there, Karen? Uh, there's uh, the first five weeks are full. I think there's a couple openings um, for the last uh, six, seven, and eight. So, yeah, but the first ones are full. And um, you can go to the northportartcenter.org and actually look at their website and then figure out um, what's open in there. You can go under youth classes and right. stuff and see what's being offered yeah. there. And other than that, we have a new exhibit in. Um, it's called The Garden Party after Ricky Nelson's song. And uh, we had a very nice reception, uh, not this past Friday, the Friday before. 
And um, so we're, you know, we're busy with that. We've got our, we put some more artwork into City Hall this morning, the Ukrainian show that we had here. So that's now up at City Hall. And uh, all around town, there's artwork somewhere. So this is really great. Uh, it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, people heal through art. Yes. And that's one of the one of the things that Sue, we're going to talk with Sue a little bit about this, because Sue set up an anti-bullying program uh, with some of her performers that went around and actually did performances within the school systems and different places around. And I do, yeah, and I do know that Northport, uh, I'm going to let um, let Joan Morgan make the announcement on one of the shows that I'm doing, but they do have an anti-bullying program that they're going to be talking about and actually introducing within the schools this year. Um, so, uh, so with that being said, uh, let's introduce to you the famous Sue Strope. No, Sue Strope, and I'll, uh, let the audience know exactly how I know Sue. When I was with the Charlotte Players, I, over the years, I've been involved with the Charlotte Players, and I actually helped develop the Kids on Stage program there. And Sue was one of our main directors for the Kids on Stage program. Sue actually has, and Sue, I'm going to let you explain to people what your background is. And you even went to grad school, and you went and um, did grad school uh, things in Mexico. She's bilingual. She can speak both yeah. Spanish and English, yes. She's a multi-talented person. So go ahead, Sue. Tell me. Well, can I talk about world. Ricky Nelson first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know? Okay. This is one of the reasons that being involved in the arts is so important. Ozzie Nelson was his father. Ozzie Nelson grew up with my two uncles in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. He and my uncles danced together. Now, a lot of the kids who start, you know, at a young age end up having it as a career. So Ozzy loved it so much that he decided to go into it as a career. And um, my uncles didn't, you know, they ended up running their running a company and being a big CEO, but, but he really loved it. And you don't know what you want to do until you do it. Um, and I think that's really important. It's hard for kids to know what their strengths are unless they try out a lot of different things. And I think one of the hardships right now is that the schools just can't afford heavy duty arts programs. When they have to cut back, one of the first things that goes is the arts. And performing arts are very expensive. Um, that's why we're doing, we're, right now we're running a fundraiser trying to um, raise money for this summer's program. Uh, and we do fundraisers throughout the year. If anyone wants to help us, go, text 90412. Yep, Is there that you go. Thank you. And yeah, and, and just text GIVE to 90412 and do some questions. And even if you do one, it helps us. That's $1.50. So, you know, you can do up to 75 But thank you so much for having that, Miss Marie. Oh, you're welcome, Sue. You know uh, I have to say this. Over the years, and, and it's been a lot of years, Marie, since um, my daughter was a youngster, and now she's 30, um, I've been working with Marie in different in different ways, and um, she's always been so um, just so such an advocate for the kids. And um, I started very long time ago working with kids in a in a setting um, in an emotion in a school for emotionally disturbed kids in New York, and I saw it completely turn the entire group around. They had never had a summer where the kids behaved the entire summer. They never had an incident. You know, performing arts do so much for kids. Right now, the kids are out. Um, you know, you can't get them off of the off of their mm -hmm. devices and everything. But when they're when they're performing, when they're rehearsing, when they're learning their parts, 
they have to use another part of their brain. And it's the creative part. And I think that it's really important to um, feed that creativity and to nurture it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we're there to help with. And for kids to find different ways to use it. You know, once you're done with the, once you're done with doing uh, a show, you can figure out, well, maybe this has maybe this has another direction that I'm going to go to, but I'm going to use the skills that I picked up. So we've got kids who are I one kid that I worked with years and years ago um, is now a CEO of a major, major company. And he told me once that it was it was because of that, because of what he did in the theater when he was a child, that he completely saw himself in a different way. And he decided that that was something that he could do with his, that he could be something better than what he ever imagined before. And, and Sue, when you're talking about that, you and I have both seen that child that doesn't fit in any place. Right. And and they find a home that is where, and one of the things I know that I teach and you do too, that when you're on that stage, you're somebody else. Uh, those kids can become that character. They become the character. And um, they're, I, I've seen you take the shyest kid and, and actually bring bring that character to life on stage and take that child that you could barely um, say get a word out of and you teach them the skills that it needs to take on there and give them the, those tools that they become that character. Uh, I've seen transformation out of so many children and thank you for that. It's so transformational. And the kids who are, like like Marie said, they're just little wallflowers and they're afraid to even read a script or to sing a song and they don't want anyone else to hear them. Mm -hmm. um, and then they become, uh, over the years, I've seen them transform into leaders, into, um, you know, completely different people. And that never would have happened if they had not started out young in the performing arts uh, or maybe it would if they were if they were 30 or 40 years old and had more experience as, a, as an adult but i really don't think that without that early experience it would be you know they would never be the same people um, well even lawyers a lot of your lawyers and people like that that i uh, have to talk in front of yeah. organizations I actually I, I think some of them have to take a theater class too don't they? Well, I know this. I know that um, we have we have a young lady who was the lead in in several of our shows, who just graduated from law school this year. Oh, so, was oh, it Anna? Anna? Yes. Yes, Anna. <laughs> yeah, her mother is a principal here in Charlotte County, and she uh, she loves theater. Um, yeah. You know her uh, and Anna. Uh, with a lot of these kids, I know even with um, my grandchild, and uh, to be able to talk in front of groups and get up on stage, because one of the biggest things, uh, I don't know how they do it, they memorize. And I'm not a good memorizer, uh, you know, I don't memorize, and they learn at a young age how to do that. So what's the technique for memorization? Because each person's a little different, isn't well, it? Well, my technique is that I actually say it over and over and over again and i i record the other person the other person's lines and i leave a space for my lines so that i can insert myself um and that works for me but you know some people are visual learners some people are auditory learners it, everybody is different um you know there's kinesthetic learner you name it. Well, and on another thing is for learning when you're learning lines, and a lot of people may not know this. I don't even know if Karen knows this. Um, learning about blocking. Uh, blocking is where they have to stand in their spot on stage. And uh, some people do not learn their lines 
um, permanently until they're blocked because right. of because of how their memory and their where they need to be for that line. Uh, memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, That's and I've important. seen I, that. I took one acting class. I've taken improv classes, but I've taken one acting class, and I learned so much in that one acting class um, about all these different things. And I didn't realize how hard blocking is the blocking part of where these people are standing on stage. You guys have no idea how hard that is it's at a, times. It's, it's a big deal. I, I can tell you the last show I was in for the players, um, the director cast me and I said, I can't remember lines anymore. And he said, Oh, you don't have many lines. And I took it, I took the script home and I counted my lines and I had 101 times that I spoke and some of them were big, like not a line, but a lot of lines. Um, but yeah, and I, and I thought I'll never learn it. And somehow by the grace of God, I learned my lines. So, you know, it's, it, it's something that it'll stretch you. It'll make you a different person. I know my daughter. I was in Peter Pan and she did a four hour show, 119 page script as Wendy. And she memorized the whole thing. And she was in like almost every scene. I don't know how she did it. And she didn't miss a beat when she was doing her line. So, you know, everybody's different. Um, I don't try to, I don't try to force kids that are, that are completely, um, they have no experience whatsoever unless they think, that they can do it. I won't ask them to, you know, do 50 lines or anything like that. Um, most of the kids work their way up to where they get um, more and more and more lines, more involvement. Um, but there's some kids, there was a little girl named Brianna here in Northport who came to uh, one of our auditions years ago and they didn't cast her because she was only six years old. Well, she cried and cried and cried. And I just had to console her. And I said, I'll tell you what, because I was also directing other shows there. I said, I will cast you in our, in our next show. And I did. And that little girl ended up moving her family out to Hollywood so that she could, so she could participate um, in, in actual movies and all kinds of stuff, but she was amazing. And she just had it in her to be an actress. Um, so you see all kinds of things like that, that can happen. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about what we're doing this summer, which is Fiddler on the Roof. And the first my, time, uh, one, my, one of my watch. favorites. Yeah. It, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, there it is. That's, that's our, um, our Facebook page. And I invite everybody to go on our Facebook page, like us and, and, uh, visit it as much as possible to keep up with, um, with our, our activities. Uh, but Fiddler on the Roof, I first was in, I first was actually Seidel and Grandmother Seidel when I was at American University in college back in, I'm not going to say when, it was a really long time ago. And then um, I did it as, as one of the mamas and I was one of the gossip ladies. But um, I love it so much. And, and then I also directed it previously. Uh, and the kids, they just, they just, I don't know, it's a, it's a beautiful story. It actually ran, it um, began in 1964 on Broadway. And for that time period, when it had hit 3,000 shows, it was the longest running uh, musical production that had ever been on Broadway. So, you know, it's, it's a story that everyone can relate to. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do it this year is because it, it deals with Russian, um, you know, the Russians and how they, uh, they pushed the Jewish people out um, with pogroms and made it so difficult. And with the Ukrainian situation right now, and because we have so many Ukrainian families in the area that we embrace and love um, and, and sympathize with, obviously, that 
I think we we can see that there's a lot of um, I don't know commonality, I guess, in in what happened then and what's happening now. You know, it's a difficult scenario when you can no longer live in the place where you grew up and you have to leave your traditions behind. Um, and the, the traditions are often what makes a community. Uh, so I think when you're when you hear the first song, which is which is traditions, traditions. Yeah, tradition, tradition, yeah. And uh I think also that Tavia is trying to deal with having five daughters and how they are they are rebelling against the against all that has gone on. And I think we all have parents, if you're a parent, you have uh, you have experienced that rebellion. So I think that's why there's so much so much interest in it, because you can relate on so many different levels to what goes on in the show. And of course, the love interests, three of the older daughters fall in love. And um, it's just it's just a fabulous story. So it, it, it really is. As you're talking there. So uh, Karen, are you in the picture here still? Yeah, I'm here. OK, um, I, what do you know a little bit? Uh, have you had any of your children in theater? No, I have not. And my, my grandchildren were in band in high school and okay. in middle school and elementary, but no, nobody's been in theater. Oh, okay. And the reason I was asking that is, um, uh, you know, from different perspectives. Now, you've had your children, though, in the arts, like you said, band. And you need to have an orchestra a lot of times. Now, we use, a, uh, in today's world, we use a lot of... Um, what do you call them, CDs <laughs> or uh, uh, that we download because it gets expensive when you do that. However, there's nothing nicer than having uh, um, having live perform, I mean, live um, orchestra in there. Uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about that, how you've seen the transition happen? You know, on that, and you know what, before you go to that, let me see if I can do this for everybody. Oh, let me see. Uh, go ahead and keep on talking. I'm trying to cue okay. something up. Wait, which, which transition? A uh, transition from going from uh, live orchestras into. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, what, what we do is um, we do a junior version of the original Broadway show, which cuts it down to a more palatable thing for younger uh, kids. We work with a, the age group of eight to 18. Every once in a blue moon, we've got a seven or a seven year old. Once we even had a six year old who was so ambitious, he came in in a, in a bow tie, suspenders and a little oh. Stetson hat. Yeah. And he, he read like a 10 year old. And uh, he said he really wanted to do it. Well, you know, but anyway, um, now I forgot what I was talking about. Anyway, it's a just, it's just, uh, we, we work with younger kids. And because of that, it really helps us to have a CD. Um, yeah, it used to be that you had to have live music. We used to have to have a piano player all the time who played it over and over and over again until you got the whole orchestra. Um, but now we, we, the kids know exactly how it's going to play and they can learn it at home using the same CD. And it's, it's really great. Um, and I so appreciate MTI uh, for the, for their whole um, junior programs. That Musical they, Theater International, just for somebody that's wondering music, what's MTI. Yep. yep. MTI, uh -huh. MTI has really embraced the youth. And there's other, there's other um, obviously, Tams Widmark and other ones that are out there. But I think MTI has just uh, created these programs and they send you a, a kit and it has the books for it. So every child gets a book and every child has everything they need to be successful in the program. 
Well, for everybody out there, I'm going to bring this up now. So um, um, I am going to play. This is a, uh, uh, let me see who this is from. Um, it's a tradition, uh, the song that we're talking about that earlier from Fiddler on the Roof, Jr. And this is from uh, the THS Tampa Drama Performing uh, Arts. And I just wanted to give people a little bit of a taste what you're looking for. Sounds crazy, no? But in our little village of Anateska, one might say every one of us is a fiddler on the roof, trying to scratch out a pleasant, simple tune without breaking his neck. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in a word. Tradition! 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 Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, how to wear clothes. And because of our traditions, everyone knows who he is and what God expects him to do. Day and night must scramble for a living, be their wife and children, say his daily prayers, and who has the right as a master of the house to have their final word at the hustle, the papa, try to shop, the papa, the papa, try to shop. What's still the way to make a proper home, a quiet home, a kosher home? Who must raise a family and run the home, so papa's free to read the holy book. I just wanted to oh, give everybody love for the kids. Oh yeah, yeah, wasn't that great though? And that's a that that is out of Tampa. Um, from uh, one of the theater groups up there, but that is actually um, Fiddler on the Rough Junior, and and, and um, it gets you and whenever. So I got to make sure that I come to it. What are the dates on it? Oh, okay. Oh, and I want to, I want to give, uh, I want to give a um, shout out to the commissioners in Charlotte County. Oh for, yeah, tell that story. Well, you know, we every summer we have been doing our shows at the Cultural Center the last weekend in July. It's this last weekend in July, July 29th and 30th again. And um, anyway, David over at the theater and Jim have been working with us. They're phenomenal. They, they We go in, they set us up, they do a wonderful job. And they make the show look like a professional uh, production every time. So we were in a, we were in a um, dilemma because the Cultural Center Theater is basically closed. But um, I talked with several of the commissioners, and Joe Taseo got behind us 100% and helped us to. Um, to work together with Freedom Bible Church, who is still meeting in there. And so Freedom Bible Church is actually sponsoring our show. Oh, wow. And I can't, I can't thank them enough because it means so much to the kids to be there. It's, it's a, a life-changing experience, and it's something that they will remember forever. Um, and so anyway, I just, I just want to give thanks to all the people who have... Uh, come alongside us and Angie Talon was going to let us do it over at Neil Armstrong, but they just don't have the, the um, stage present, a stage yeah. to do it. Do they? Yeah. No, the lighting and, yeah. and all of that. And she's a wonderful uh, sponsor of the arts. Um, 
but yeah so we were really we were really concerned about that and also we have always worked with the boys and girls club and met um at the boys and girls club which got torn down this year did and, it i did not know that yes okay. yes they're going to re be rebuilding but um so that was a that was a, a just a tragedy for our program so we had no place to rehearse and no place to do it and uh so the the poor charlotte united methodist church is allowing us to um to rehearse there so we'll be rehearsing Monday to Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 8.30 and Saturday mornings from 9.30 to 12.30. And the reason we do that is that there's so many parents who are working and there are programs during the day for the kids, but then some of the kids just have to stay home all day and do nothing. And then in the evening, they, they have nothing to do either. So it works out well for working families that they can actually do something. And the parents are, are really wonderful that we work with. So um, I, I really do enjoy, uh, you know, getting to know the parents and getting to know how excited they are for our programs. And uh, Sue, so you did um, Pizza for a Cause, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, God bless those boys. I know I should call them those boys, but yeah, for uh, Dennis and David Valentino and that. Yeah, I had to. I told Sue about it. I said, "Sue, you need to register with those guys." I'm not, and you know what? They have been so generous to us. It's it's amazing. But you know, people don't understand how much it costs to do a show. Just just the books alone are fifteen hundred dollars. Um. So, you know, it, it, there are, there are, when we're talking about expenses, it's not $100 here and, and $30 there and $500 here. We're talking $1,000 here, $4,000 there, $2,000 here. And yeah, everything is very, very expensive. So, and we also have storage. So we keep our costumes in storage and that's a big chunk. Your it's condition. a big chunk of, of yeah if anyone has a giant warehouse where they'd like to let us uh keep it keep our clothing for a while it would be great but um anyway i i think that um when we're dealing with all of these different expenses it, it's it's really difficult and that's why anyone who can help us with our fundraisers especially the um, don't spend a dime fundraiser that we're doing now. And you can just help us out by filling out a few survey questions. We did that last year and we, um, we raised enough to uh, help us tremendously with our production costs. Yeah. How do you do that, Sue? Who are you signed up with? Because uh, it's, uh, I know that the players did it too, didn't they? It's, yes, I think so. It's 100 X. And they work with um, they non work with nonprofits, 501c3 corporations like us, and um, and what they do is they are, they're actually putting the corporate community together uh, with the nonprofits, and so let's say Coca Cola is an example because that's something everybody knows. You can go on and you can say. Do you drink Coca-Cola? It's it, the questions might be, do you drink Coca-Cola all the time or how often do you drink it? But then it says, what do you like about this quality um, availability and things like that. And so you just push a smiley face or a frowny face and then that's it. And you finish and it takes about one minute to do a question and you just made a dollar 50 for the, for the organization. It's, it's astounding. It's, absolutely a huge blessing for us uh, how hard was it to get your money um after after it was over they just sent us a check about i don't know it's maybe a month later oh so you so because i know that was a concern at the time when it was first started where people were doing that and said well, we haven't received any check or anything, so you didn't. You no, know, I don't actually remember if the if it was maybe it was a direct deposit. I just know it took about a month. Okay. 
and then that's it was just there. And I just thought, oh my gosh. Yeah, and, and just to tell Karen, that's something available to any of the nonprofits mm -hmm. out there. So that's something that you may want to look into uh, for the Northport no, Arts no. Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and working as partnerships with all the different organizations out there, we're always trying to help, um, you know, each other and all the different nonprofits out there. Uh, so I want to talk about you a little bit because you skipped around it. I want to tell people about your background because you went to college. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, take I, us I, through I, your college career. Well, let me just say I started loving theater when I was in eighth grade. I, not in eighth grade, when I was eight years old. But even before that, I did little shows in our backyard. And I loved doing it because I could make my little brother the horse. And he had to stay down <laughs> on all four. So that was great. Oh, well, but the, And I have to tell you this. The girl who wrote our scripts back then is a nationally known playwright right now. She recently had, a, had one of her uh, scripts performed at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. So if you think this is just playing... It's not. It can be a lifetime um, career. You know, not, yeah. not just as an actress, but as whatever interest, yeah. a techie, a writer, or whatever. But anyway, okay, so I went, um, I played the lead in a lot of shows when I was young. And then um, I got to college and I was so confused because I didn't know what I wanted to major in. And I majored in theater and then I minored in theater. And then I said, well, what am I going to do as a theater major? And then I got a Fulbright scholarship to, to the National University in Mexico, the UNAM, um, and I was there for two years. And, uh, and that was really fun. We did some stuff there that, you know, just, it, was, it brought theater to one of the shows I did. They, they did a national tour for six months mm -hmm. after it was over. So it was very, very exciting. And then I went into the army and I was a, I was um, an O3B20, which is an entertainment specialist for theater. And then I uh, went to Cal State LA and I did two more years of graduate school in theater. So um, yeah, I've been involved in, in theater quite a bit. And then after that, I said, you know what? I'm going to have to have a real job. I, I love theater, but I guess I'm going to have to do something real. And so I have been uh, doing it as an avocation ever since then um, in, you know, just in just community organizations all over the country um, and also in churches and you know just wherever they needed a director i would help them out and usually and and, and let's talk about your costume costume uh, you, where else did you go um well yeah we i actually did a, a costuming uh uh session at, you know it was part of american university but in london um in london england and worked with some of these really incredible designers who, you know, it's just amazing. Yes, I went to Fashion Institute of Technology. I love sewing, I, but I'm one of these nutty costumers that wants to be historically accurate. accurate. Yeah, historically yeah. correct. So I'm yeah, drama part. Yeah, I just, I just, I'm sorry. I just, everything has to be right. And I get really upset when it's mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, they didn't wear dresses to their knees then. They wore them to the ground. How can you put, but you know, other people probably don't care, just me. Um, but yes, I like to keep it as, as historically accurate as possible because I think it gives a more realistic perspective on what the people were going through at that time. Absolutely. And I, I think theater is just such a great way to learn history. And you know, if we don't learn, if we don't learn history, we're condemned to relive it. So. Very, that is so true. So you know, I'm a history nut, anyhow, I, and and it just um, repetition, and it passes generations. Our generation um, 
if we go back in time, even with the pandemic and stuff, you go back to 1918, and you also go into uh, typhoid, Mary, typhoid Mary and different things. I just did a show the other day about that. Um, you just got to look back at history, the fall of the Roman Empire, and even with with our American um what we have going on here, and I don't want to get political or anything, but we are considered the great American experiment. And, and um, you know, you have to go back into history and see why different uh, civilizations or different governments did fail. And, I, and you can see repetition already here. You know, you look back um, and you go into the fall of the Roman Empire, it, it all boils down to... Yeah, um, I just recently, I, I and I think if people study what how Hitler took over Germany, I, I think that would be interesting. And it was them. so short of a period of a time. It was within four it years. It, it, it was a four-year period of time. And uh, History Channel has a really great program out about the history of him because he was jailed back in the um, 1920s because of... Uh, what they were doing, and then he got in. He knew how to manipulate the people around him and to get into the right people, and then end it. Yeah, and how how easily people can be fooled. That's why I never take anything at face value. I drive people nuts too. You know that. So I drive. I want to know why. I always want to know I, why. I think that's a. I think that's a very important mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get back to Fiddler on the Rough because hopefully, oh, yeah. I'm going, hopefully I can make it. I'm supposed to be going to Minnesota and I'm looking and I go, oh man, am I going to be gone again? Because I think I missed yours last time because I oh, was gone. Last year we did Susical. It was. Yes. Really and that, that's another one of my favorite shows, Susical. Um, I, I've been involved in so much of the. Uh, children's theaters, and there are certain ones that I actually pull out, and I go, "Oh man, I just love these shows, and I love, um, yeah. I love to see the growth of the kids, and I love to see the kids um, before backstage. I also love to see where the kids with their after parties and what kind of a bond that they create within among the cast. You know what? I, I what I love our kids just love each other so much and they'll have somebody come in, especially if it's a little, little one and they'll start, you know, loving on them right away. The older ones, they'll just embrace them. They'll start talking with them. But when they get back together again from the last show that they did, it's like, Oh my gosh. Oh, and they're I all hugging and so yeah. excited to see each other. And, and, you know, and um, let's talk about the backstage crew, too, because without that, I'm going to leave your uh, flyer up on the on our screen right now. In case you're tuning in and listening to this on air, if you go to WKDW 97.5's Facebook page, you can see the flyer up, you know, in case you miss anything here. We do do all of this stuff visually on uh, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. So in case you're ever looking for anything, you can go to the WKDW 97.5 uh, Facebook page, Twitter page, and YouTube page and find all that information. And with show this show, you can go to the Northport Art Center Facebook page also. And it'll be there. Besides my personal one, but I don't even know if you're all my personal friends. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to say, and, and a lot of people don't understand this. Yes, we have auditions. But everybody who signs up for the camp is automatically in the show. So um, we do audition because we want to we want to correctly put the people in the, the best part for them. Um, but our our audition period is actually very short. It's the thirtieth, uh, and then whatever we have to do, it'll be the next time we get together. But um, June 30th is the big night. So I hope everybody can make it that has. And please let your grandkids know about it and uh, your neighbor kids. And, you know, there's a lot of kids who are sitting at home doing nothing that they don't even know that they love it. One of the one of our kids who's the biggest advocate for us right now got paid to do it by his by his grandmother. 
<laughs> and, and he said he didn't want to do it. He said, no, no, no. And, you know, and she said, if you go, I'll give you this much money. Now he's like, I'm trying to tell everybody how much fun it is. Why won't they understand? It's so much fun. And, um, you know, so I think if you if you just bring them, they'll, what is it? What's that thing? If you build it, they'll come. They'll come. Yeah. 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 So if you bring them, they'll love it. Yeah. And even if you um, don't put your child into it, support the arts and actually attend the show. And uh, let me explain to the audience too. We're, rehearsals begin June 30th at the Port Charlotte United Methodist Church at 21075 Quesada Avenue, Port Charlotte. And that's on the corner, so isn't it, of um, Quesada and... Pascaya, maybe? Um, uh, I think yeah, it's Pascaya. Okay. And then at, um, Monday through Thursday evenings at 6.30 to 8.30, and on Saturday morning from 9.30 to 12.30, performances right. will take place at the Cultural Center Theater, July 29th and 30th at 7 p.m. Camp cost is $125, and scholarships are available. If you can't afford it, just get a hold of um, ca by calling 941-456-5262. Again, 941-456-5262. It's open to children from 8 to 18. It's the Charlotte County Children's Theater, Visit them on their Facebook page, which is Charlotte County Children's Theater. And um, that information will be there. And actually, they have a pop-up that you can send them a direct message to on their um, Facebook page. Do you have a website, Sue? No. Okay. We've yeah, I mean, we've had a website, but it's, but, it's awfully hard to keep it it's up. It's hard to keep it up, especially when you're a nonprofit running pretty much um, by yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get that. I really do get that. Uh, I really, um, go ahead. Go ahead. When do the tickets go on sale for the show? Okay. Oh. Um, tickets, actually, you can get your tickets at the door, or we will have tickets at, at the rehearsals um, after probably the second week. So during the third week and on, they can come and, and get, uh, get tickets during rehearsal time. Um, but the tickets will be $15 for adults and $7 for kids. You can't even go to the, to no, the movies for no. that kind of money. And, no. um, you know, it's, it's just a really good opportunity for people to even expand. If, if your children aren't in it, at least bring them to have an experience in theater. My grandmother used to take me to Broadway when I was just a young, a young kid. And I think that just opened my mind to the thing. Well, see what it's done? It's it's created a monster because <laughs> I'm still doing it. And uh, well, so I'm going to do a challenge out here to the people that are listening to the show. There's a way that I can do it on our Facebook page that I can send up randomly if they start watching us, and and that that I can do an, a random drawing, and I'll tell you what. I will pay for those tickets for, we'll do a random drawing uh, for people to go uh, to see the show. And that I think that's a good way for getting people to go. Cause you know me, I'm the sweepstakes queen anyhow, you know, to do a giveaway. Yeah. I and I don't think, Karen, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think Karen really realizes how much I sweepstaked in my life and won. No, I don't think no, anyone I, would believe it. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. True. Yeah, it's all true. And I remember, oh, he, uh, leave, uh, Freshette is watching us right now. He was watching, and his grandson, um, uh, is a good actor and singer. And I said for him to actually, uh, get his grandson into oh, doing great. this this summer. Uh, but his wife is Tammy Renee. And Tammy Renee, yeah, Tammy Renee it would be her grandchildren. Tammy Renee is our country western gospel singer that we oh, had wow. at, at um, Kaleidoscope of the Arts, and she's one of my favorite uh, singers out there and performers. So she, you know, excellent, and she does like you do. So she gives away a lot in her life and stuff. She she uh, is always giving back, but she's really talented. So 
uh, she's actually coming out with a new album too. Oh wow! Isn't yeah, it? A new CD. Yeah, well, she goes we will, to we will be having we will be having um, a drawing at the end of uh, for our fundraiser um, towards the end. So there will be prizes. Um, so you know. Keep, so keep do, yeah. Well, so do the texting. Yeah. The texting yep. survey. Yep. And again, let's tell people how to do that texting survey. I can bring that back up for us. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh, my computer. You're so, good. You're so good at technical things, Maria. Yeah, not really. Not really. Sometimes. Okay. I'm getting well, back. I can say it. It's 90412. Text oh. give 90412. And pick Charlotte County Children's Theater. Charlotte County Children's Theater is spelled R E not er so we're the british i i think that i think the thespians love it to be theater um you know and uh, uh, they're serving homage to the to their uh, roots with william shakespeare and so forth right so again text give the word give g-i-v-e to nine zero four one two or go online to uh hundred x dot com give without spending and select your organization which would be the charlotte county children's theater uh with the re uh sue is there yeah. anything uh, we have to end the show right now but is there anything else that you would like to really encourage people and you too karen is there things that um even with the northport art center there's a children's program there uh, for the summer, go to northportartcenter.org, or if you want, go to uh, the Facebook page, even of the Northport Art Center. They have their own youth um, page too. Or and for Sue, go to Children uh, Charlotte County Children's Theater and find out more information. And Sue, thank you for doing what you do, because there are so few of you out there that are doing this, and. Um, uh, you know, here we go. With, sorry, I missed it. So good job, girlfriend. And that's <laughs> uh, you know, a mutual friend of ours and that. She's actually, she's actually our costumer. Is she? Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Well, glad that she'll be able to go back and watch this because this is recorded. So thank you all for um, coming in and listening to us today. I know that you have choices in your life to actually uh, take that time out of your time to listen to us. And it's so precious and we so appreciate it. And there's one other choice you can do in life, to be kind or not to be kind. Always please choose kindness because without us having kindness in the world, it can be a real mess. And if we're just kind to each other, it doesn't matter if we have difference of opinions, just be kind, have some respect. Uh, Thank you all. That's our number one rule in our in our organization. Be kind. Be kind. That's all you have to do is be kind and everything else falls into place. Thank you, everybody. See you again uh, next week on Kaleidoscope of the Arts. You've been listening to us on WKDW 97.5 FM, Real Community Radio out of Northport, Florida, from the Bishop West Real Estate Tower. <laughs>